Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this brand new show in Other News. We're going to be looking at funny and quirky news stories from around the world. And the most important part is we're going to be thinking about Muslims. Good news stories about Muslims, entertaining news about Muslims. But you know what? I'm not going to be talking about this myself. I've got my co-presenters with me, Sam and Big J. Salam, Salam my brothers. Salam. 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 And I've got my stories ready. You guys ready? Man, I've got stories that are off the chain. I've got some stories as well, mashallah. I've got some spooky stories. Some fun whoa, whoa, things that's happened. Well, you're a spooky Don't guy. Don't say spooky, though, you man. Know, you're going to scare yeah. Sam. He scares himself. <laughs> you, you did. You, you do. <laughs> you did? You do? You scare me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you're speaking oh, for all right. of the day. I agree. Okay, I agree. Right. Now, you know what? The first segment is a great segment. Never mind the Muslims. Uh, Jay, do you want to kick this one off? Do you know what? I will kick, uh, kick it off. Thank you very much. All right. So today's story I've got, child dressed as ghost accused of Islamification of Halloween. Oh, now let me take you through the story. Gosh. Let me take you through the story. We all know, yeah, around the world, yeah. globally, there's a lot of people that celebrate Halloween as, as a day of celebration. Yeah, it's five but, days ago. But Muslims yeah. don't. It's not an Islamic... Yeah, we don't. No, it's not an Islamic celebration. Sam, we have the two loud. Eids and that's what we celebrate. However, we did come under some firing of it. For example, I think what happened here what was two children went out, dressed as ghosts from head to toe, trick or treating, and they got accused of Islamifying Halloween. Wait, wait, how... <laughs> These people that accuse these kids, how short do they think but Muslim let me put, women are? Let me, let, me, let, me put a, <laughs> let me put a little disclaimer In before, we, before we carry on. Let me put a disclaimer. Now, I don't know if this is true. I don't know if it's fake okay. news. But I came across it on social media. And uh, what I'm trying to get at is the essence of... Yeah. Like, it did cause some rift amongst people that read it. Yeah. And they're thinking, oh, how can Muslims do this? And, and then I'm thinking to myself, there's other people on there that are thinking, no, hold on, this got nothing to do with Muslims. And I'm just thinking, you know what? This is a story that we can truly see when yeah. people don't really understand what's going on with Muslims. Well, like you just said. Exactly. Like, yeah. oh my God, like, can you imagine, like, the Muslims are taking over. Halloween's yeah. gone as well now. I can't believe what's going on. And who, which Muslim woman wears white? Like, well, a as, as a burqa, though, I've not, I've not really seen no, I've not seen a plain white. Maybe white. not in this country, but I think they do in, in hotter around countries. the world. Yeah. But, but that's not the point here. And if it was fake news, right? I don't know why someone would put this news out. Like, yeah. Muslims, Islamification of Halloween. Yeah, I mean, yeah that's my spooky Look, looks story, like, man. It looks mm -hmm. like it's a bit of a trouble-causing article, to be honest. Could more be. than anything else. Could be. To be could honest, be. I love the kids, though. Could you know, be. I've got a story about a kid, in fact. Oh, yeah. my God. I was watching this this week, and I thought it was an ama amazing story. Very positive. Because Have you heard of Khalida Mela? No. Have you heard of her? No. South London kid. Grew up on the estates. And basically, there was a woman who set up a horse... Uh, stables company in the middle of South yeah. London in the estates, guys. We have a look, yeah, under one of the tube stations, and she set up this horse riding club wow. for underprivileged children That's that don't me. get to do these uh, pretty much uh, rich sports, so to speak. So swimming. this is what so Khalid 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 and, Mela, and first she was one of the students. Jockey. Absolutely, she was one of the students. She went into a competition with her hijab on, full of swag. Guess what, guys? Smashed it. She won already. Mm. Absolutely amazing, repping South West London. Mashallah. So she's from England, yeah? Yeah, and you know what the funny thing was? Their, um, uh, well, I don't know, what, you, what do you call it with the horses? Uh, galloping? Uh, no, not galloping, the actual place. Stable, stable, stable place, stable place. Stables are where the horses are kept where overnight. Where they uh, gallop, where do they gallop? What's the word for it? Anyway, what happened is someone <laughs> threw a sofa into the, the, the pit. Ground. We'll call it a pit. She threw it into the pit. Do you know what? Do you know what? I tried horse riding, yeah? It's not as easy as you think. It's not as easy as you it's think. It's very difficult. I thought I was a big man. I'm walking up to it and say, you know what? You are what? a big man. In, in, in other senses. Oh, yeah. okay, right. So I thought okay. I can ride up to it and say, you know what? I'm going to take this horse and I'm going to ride it. Yeah. But, but as I was getting up to it, I bottled it. 
I mean, I got on it, but I, I thought I was going to do like a you, little... You don't start yeah. running with it. He nah, watching too much of them Western films, bro. I told like, you. It wasn't. It was a Turkish-inspired film, that, uh, uh, series that I was watching. I yeah. thought I was going to do one of those runs, but it didn't happen. I Did tried, you need a step-ladder to get on them? I horse yeah? riding in Turkey. It was very painful. Yeah? Very painful. And there was there was a couple of people that were with me, right? So the, one of the guys, it wasn't me, he was a very big, loud mouth, right? And the guy that was putting us on the horses smacked... That no horse. way. And that oh horse just God. went off like a shot. So do you... <laughs> and the other guy, by the time he came off, he, you could tell he was in so much pain and he was very, very scared so as well. Like, so hold on, uh, so I was holding on for dear life. Do you like horses, yay or nay? It's got to be a yay. yay. <laughs> well done, Sammy. That was a good story, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First, he jabbed your jockey. No, no, story, it's pr- pr- proud moment. Inspiring, inspiring. It's very inspiring. inspiring. Yeah, yeah. It just goes to show it doesn't matter where you are from, yeah. there are opportunities around for us. Yeah. Like she's done very well indeed. Yeah. Now, I just want to show you guys my headline now. So let's look at my headline real quick. Now, this is a very interesting news story and yeah. a very inspiring news story as well. Muslim cop dives into freezing river to save man. Wow. Now, oh, my God. What a ledge already. Definitely a ledge, right? Now, you don't really hear about news stories like this quite often. Right? A Muslim police officer saved the life of a Caucasian male who was drowning in freezing cold waters, right? But PC Muhammad Nadim did exactly that. Especially. He's Asian. Yeah. And he's a northerner. He's Asian. He's a, he's well, a, Asian oh, people and cold water don't mix. We man. don't mix. So and, and he, he jumped him, in. And he jumped in. Smashed and for him, him to take that step as well. He was beyond all, the call of duty. Yeah. Way beyond it. He's oh, only right. supposed to be walking the streets. And he saved his life. Well. He's, he actually saved, saved his life. Yo, you better believe that guy who he saved his life. He better give him a thanks or something. He better be grateful imagine, for that. Imagine, he pulled him out He better be grateful for that. To be honest, imagine, right? You're walking out. Just, I'm just trying to understand from his point of view mm. as well as a police officer. And in the article, he goes on to say that, look, it was a split second thing. I saw him struggling in the war and I, and I thought to myself, I've got to jump in. Now, I know myself, freezing cold temperatures, full stop, I wouldn't jump in the water. I know that sounds really bad. Yeah. To be honest, would, would you jump in the water, Sam? I'll be honest be with honest. you. I'll look and my heart will go out for him, but I don't think I'll jump in still. <laughs> I'll, I'll be know. calling 999, I'll be honest, like... but I wouldn't be jumping in. Yeah. And do you know what? Eva, he's really, really brave. I think he's brave. Or he's Crazy. he was in the moment, he just jumped in. I, I mean, hands down, man, he must have been a strong swimmer. Yeah, just jumping like it was a river, he jumped into a river. Yeah. And if it's cold, those currents are not easy. It's not bro. easy. They're and, not easy. On top of that, if, if they, yeah. and, and just to be honest, right? Uh, Sam, are you much of a hero? What's the most heroic yeah, thing you've ever done? I'd save uh, children from uh, trees all the time on the way to work. I uh, help <laughs> people across the road all the time. I'm a, I'm a legend. <laughs> I'm a legend. The yeah. most heroic thing yeah. I've done, right? I'll tell you, I'll tell you. It's just coming to my mind, right? Uh, I was an inspector on buses for quite a number of years, right? Yeah, yeah. On, on, on the buses. And as I was in one of the buses, this guy, I noticed he was slumped between the seats. Okay. And uh, I thought immediately, obviously... There's something wrong. There's something wrong with yeah. him. I pulled him out and he was having a diabetic fit. Wow. Oh my right? God. And I pulled him out, pulled him to the... And I was first aid trained. Pulled him out to the middle of the... Of the, the, the gangway, yeah. if you like, where the, all the disabled chairs and stuff goes. Pulled him out, put him in resuscitation, and then uh, called out to the driver. He had some chocolate, crushed it, put it in his mouth, and then gave him water straight away, right? Because because uh, my family, one of my members of my family, they're diabetic as well. Okay. And I, and I, yeah, yeah. I, I so quickly, you knew what to do. Yeah, the symptoms were quite recognisable. Gave him water, a paramedic came, they checked him and said his sugar level was about to go into... Diabetic coma. Wow. And yeah, the actions of yeah. myself and the bus driver, I think we saved his life. That, that is heroic. Yeah. That is heroic right there. That was the most closest thing. You I've thought you was a legend, it, yeah. more like a legend. What was that? <laughs> all, I, all I'm saying is this, Sam, you but are not what, no what hero. What have you done? What have you done? You know done what? I'll tell you the most heroic thing I've done is this, right? I was, on, I was in transit uh, coming back from South Africa and there was an old lady uh, from Pakistan. You like how I said that as well, right? From Pakistan. And she couldn't speak English and obviously she couldn't speak Arabic either and she was lost. And I helped her out. That's and I got, I, that that's, is that's heroic. something you do. And she was no, that's the most standard. heroic thing he Yeah, done, for no, me, yeah. that's heroic. It's not really heroic, though, is it? It is. It's, just sort of, his level. it's better than climbing trees, your leg end. I'd climb a very <laughs> tall tree. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but even bonsai is going to be tall for you, isn't it? Like, but you all right. need ladders when you earn the time. Anyway, 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 let's move on. I've nah. got another one. You've got another story? I've got, I've got something else. I've got something else, right? I've got something else. Now, we've heard of certain things about Muslims, right? Too many and things. this is an example where Muslims can't even organise a prayer in the mosque. <laughs> oh, right? oh my let's God. check this story out. The most popular name uh, 
in England is oh wow Muhammad not Muhammad mate not Muhammad the most popular name in England would have been Muhammad but if we did have one very one specific way of spelling it but Muslims being Muslims oh. we've got different ways of spelling Muhammad now if you put them two together you got Muhammad 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 Mehmet is one it's not on the list uh, and there's so, there's so many different nine. ways. So there's like nine it's, different ways to spell the name. There's nine different ways. Now, if we put them all we together, universal yeah. spelling, we would have been number on the one. consensus number one. Muhammad would have been the number one name uh, in the consensus it's, of being see, the most so, popular name. But I've got a question now. Uh, what is the right way to spell the name? Well, what? to be honest, it's an Arabic name, so I would go with the Arabic spelling, Meme Ha Meme Dan. I uh, mean, it's like because we're not like, living in Arab lands. Okay, so it, in, and we're doing it in translate English. Translate that for us. What would what's you? The what's the closest spelling? one on for here? For me, to be honest, I, I go with you. M U H A M M. From here, from here, from the first, first one. one. Yeah, I'll go for the first one. Yeah. So M-U-H. the most, the, the yeah. most popular one out of that one is three thousand five hundred. Yeah, that's the way of spelling it. That, that's the way I would spell it but as well. Were you told at school like there's a, there's a wrong way to write? You yeah. can't spell it this way because that's only specific to the prophet. Anyway, but it was it was all madness. Know, it's, this is the thing, and, and so I said, no, I agree. I agree. I agree with what you're saying. So there, there you go. I mean, we, <laughs> we don't come together for a lot of things, and this is one of them. Yeah. <laughs> in the in the issues. Spelling yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so now you know what I'm saying. Spelling is isn't it? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> right. Yeah. Very interesting story. That was. If only the Muslims yeah. could work together and have one spelling for the beautiful name of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But you know, unfortunately, yeah. haven't. Right. It's true, it's true. But you know what? I believe you've got some interesting news to talk about now. Yeah, Sam. guys, I've got an amazing story here. Let's have, take a look. Woman disqualified from Ohio race because of her hijab. This was in America, Noor Alexandria. She entered a race running, and guess what? She got disqualified because she was wearing a hijab. And the funny thing was, she was actually wearing the proper branded sports gear by one of the famous companies, and she still was not allowed to race. Wow. What do you guys think of that? I think that's so, very so unfair. She, she was going to race. She was going to race. Yeah, she was on the touchline. I, I read about this. It was the cross-country running, wasn't it? Absolutely. And uh, she was disqualified purely because of her hijab. Now, uh, now you mentioned this as well, right? There's a huge de- designer label, fashion brand, that creates women's hijabs for them to be sports women, right? Mm. And athletes. Mm. And this was a very... Yeah. Um, Huge step they took in terms of helping and assisting Muslim women to be active, right? Yeah, now, absolutely. Still, having that and the brand on the hijab, because if you read, if you look at the article, you actually see the brand you know what? on I'm the hijab. I'm proud of her already, man. She smashed it. I'm, I'm proud, proud of her already. You, bro. She, they, we got our sisters going out there yeah, and doing something. We had yeah. the jockey. We have this sister now that they're going out there, they're doing races. All these thinking that oh, we somehow uh, our women are yeah, in the back. Of course. Yeah. It's not like that. It's not yeah, like they're that. definitely doing more like than that. you though, aren't they? If you think about it. I know I'm sorry to crush yeah. your hopes and dreams, but I mean, you're not really swimming. I don't know why he's you're so not... inferior with yeah. me, but it's all right. It's all right. We love are you, you Are you a good swimmer? I'm a t- I'll be honest, you. I'm a terrible swimmer. I'm Bengali, bro. It's in my blood to be a good <laughs> swimmer. Oh, yeah, what are you on about, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. You swim with the fish and you eat them. All right, Sammy. Have you heard of that quote about the the axe? And the trees. Right, okay. Even though the axe continued to come back and chop the trees down, the trees never complained because they thought he was one of their own. Mm. I like that. This is where the fish think about them as well, eh? Right. <laughs> Coming back to the story, guys, like, do you think that it's UK is more tolerant than the US with things like this? I'll be honest, it always seems like... You mean a more lot inclusive? Of these, I mean, are they more tolerant or inclusive then than the US? Because it always, these I just, stories I, keep I just think that's a, ve- a, ve- a very sad thing to happen because yeah. imagine you're... No, no, I think there was a well. case. I think there was a case in the UK where someone was also not For the allowed. hijab band. I, 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 Oh, was that in the U- I UK? Think, I think USA that was in? the US as well, I think. Just the US has happened. Yeah, I mean, this really inspired me to start running again because I've run 100 meters in, I think, six seconds. That's what <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do. When? Yeah. when? What do you mean? Sammy, listen, I've known you since we anyway, were how old? are you laughing at? <laughs> you have never run anyway in anyway. six seconds. <laughs> Look, I'll be honest, we can race I about actually, this Actually, later. right, you can get from the living room sofa to the microwave Say mashallah. In 20 seconds, I'll give you that. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. You've, never, you've never been a sprinter, right, speaking though. Speaking of on. microwaves, what stories do you have? <laughs> <laughs> microwaves. Listen, forget microwaves, right? Now, I have got a very interesting story indeed. Now, you've all heard of the saying, yeah. a picture speaks a thousand words. Now, I'm going to show you guys a picture. You guys at home as well are going to see a picture. Tell me what you think when you look at this. Oh, my... 
Gosh. Now, be- Jenna, before you say anything, that's not Sammy on the train coming into work. Yeah. Yes, no, that person's too tall. Sammy's there. <laughs> oh, oh, you took it. I thought you was the one on the. Well, lead. you're talking about oh. Sam sitting down. No, no, no. I'm on about Sam on, on uh, dressed up. I'm not gonna lie though. I really like. <laughs> is that not a woman? Is that not a woman in there? Okay. All right. Let's 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 just try and observe the image right now, right? So. I don't know about you, right? So Sam it's in the OJ. UK. Because we know it's a UK train. We know it's the underground. Yeah. Now, now, understand this, right? Do you, do you really believe a woman to have hands that big, first of all? Well, I, I can't comment on that. But personally, me, I don't have a problem with this picture. I really mm. don't have a problem with this picture because... You don't have a problem te- with the picture? Technically, Muslims... No, can... that's, a, that's, that's a cross-dresser. That, that's what I thought. No, that's a cross You know why? Not the hands. Not the hands, right? The Check the ankles out. There are some man-sized ankles, bro. <laughs> Do you measure man's, men's no, ankles? No, but I've been living for 36 years. I think I know the difference between a woman's ankle and a man's ankle. Right, okay. okay. So, I'll be honest with and you. And the just... knee, man. <laughs> that knee's poking out, bro. That yeah. can't be a man. And the feet are big. The feet are massive. What I love is the man behind the dog. Even he's actually, confused. Like, even, let's say, even if it, were, if it was a Muslim woman, like, is or it man. Or, or man? Is it wrong okay. to carry a dog say, as long as it's not entering the house? No, but can I just say protection? How, yeah, the dog. How it's often, outside. How often have you seen a Muslim female taking a dog for a walk? First of all, answer me that question. Bro, it's, any, it's, if, if it's, anyone it's, it's knows taboo, any Muslim women, yeah, they do not they're like not dogs. They're not coming near to dogs, mate. Yeah, they do not come this way because they're gonna have a wake us. Exactly. I know that. I'll be honest with you. I once saw a dog. Jump on a Muslim auntie, and I felt really bad. I was like, Auntie, I, I want to help you, bro. I can't. <laughs> but you were scared as well. I've got, I've got to tell you this story. I've got to tell you this story because we're talking about dogs, right? I've got to tell you this story, right? I was picking up my daughter, yeah, and we just came back from the masjid. We're going home now, right? And as we ca- came out of the car, there was a dog that was on, not on the leash. A man was walking it around. Yeah. Now, this dog, this dog now, uh, decides to start running towards us. And I tell my daughter, don't run away. Yeah, yeah. If you start running away, yeah. it's going to chase you. The dog came closer. What did she do? She ran off. She ran oh off. Now God. this dog started chasing her. And you know, father is just jumped so in, you- right? <laughs> I went running after my daughter. Do- my daughter fell on the floor because the dog then pounced on yeah. her. I went running after the dog. The mm-hmm. dog tried, oh, obviously the dog was playing. The yeah. dog was playing. And I started like pushing the dog away. Yeah, yeah. The man came, we took the dog. And I told my daughter, I said, you know what? That's what happened to you on this end. And the second thing is, you left your daddy. Oh <laughs> you, left, you left your daddy. She goes, oh. Then she goes, but the dog was kind of cute now. <laughs> well, that's my dog story. I don't oh know my. if this happened to you guys when you were kids, right? But did your parents ever say to you, watch, the dog's going to eat you if you don't listen? Did you, did you get to told To be honest, that? I was told a lot of stuff about dogs. So many misconceptions, but... To be honest, we maybe that was just a Sheffield thing. We just grew up with dogs around everywhere. To You've be honest, always been scared yeah. of dogs, Sam. Just the little ones. Okay. <laughs> <Don't even laughs> to be honest, though. it is actually the little ones that I'm afraid of because they're the most aggressive. They are very aggressive. It's the big fluffy ones. Do you know what it is? Do you know what it is? It's their inferiority. <coughs> Always the little ones have the most loudest bark. They do, so I agree. Like I'm not implying <laughs> anything. Who's talking about you? Uh, Waffi, 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 anyway. But yeah, <laughs> dogs, um, craziness, so isn't it? Th- yeah. Let's get back to the picture now, right? Just real quick, I want to summarise on this one. Is this a male or a female? I personally think it's a male because you would never see a Muslim sister taking the dog for a walk well, on the tube. I'll be honest, it probably, I think it's a woman. You think? I think I'm going to leave woman, it yeah. the way you opened it. A pictures say a thousand words. Yeah. <laughs> and just for the yeah. point of record, she is it. on the Piccadilly line. How do you know that? How because you know? of the blue bars. Piccadilly line, blue bars. Dark blue as well. You learn? Blue. Yes. They, they like blue though, they're sure? not. Yeah, every single tube like has its line, own right? coloured bar. So if it's the Jubilee line, it's going to be a... Oh, actually, um, he's right. Yeah. It makes sense yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. It's good. Just so you, when you run on the train. Guys, speaking of travelling, let's travel across the globe to the most electrifying city in the world, Mecca al mukarrama You got a story from Mecca, yeah? Bro, I'm telling you, I watched a video absolutely astonishing. A sheikh, uh, our uncle, 129 years old. Wow. He's been to the masjid almost every single day of his life. He gives us a piece of advice. Let's take a look, boys. Let's take a look. <laughs> Hey. 
بتقوى الله في السر والعلن. الله يجزيك خير. هذه الاولى، الثانيه اوصي أه. نفسي واوصي برضا الله ورضا الوالدين. الله اكبر. وابشر بالخير من الله مع تقوى الله. الله يجزيك خير. الثالثه اوصي نفسي واوصي الصلاه على وقتها. وابشر بالخير من الله مع تقوى الله. الله يجزيك خير. والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله. الله يعطيك العافيه، انت الان آه ما شاء الله. لك أكثر من ستين سنة ما شاء الله في الحرم نعم أنا تقريب مية أنا لحين أمشي في المية والتسعة والعشرين الله يسعد تبارك فيك ما شاء الله تبارك الله اللهم بارك كل من يشوف المقطع ذا يقول اللهم بارك ويدعي للوالد بالبركة ونمد الله في عمره ويحسن في عمله جزاك الله خير الله يرضى guys you know what brothers here this is a living example of someone who knows the haram like the back of his hand Yeah. Subhanallah, what amazing advice he gave you. know, so simple. 100 years he's been going there, man. Yeah. 100 years. I just came back there from, from there a couple of weeks ago. Oh. Right? And this guy, Subhanallah, the blessed place, he's given such a beautiful advice about. Uh, the second one really got to me being dutiful to, to your, your parents. parents. 129 yeah. years old, 100 years he's been going he's to the masjid. Still he's doing blessed. It. Allahumma barik. He's a he legend. Allahumma legend, definitely. definitely. I mean, definitely imagine. 100,000. Can you imagine? 100. Thousand rewards every single prayer. The pilgrims must know him. He knows them. People coming in and out. Literally, you know, he is the living embodiment of. One hundred thousand times five times hundred. Is that's the right maths? Yeah. You five times maths. the salat. So you've got five hundred thousand a day. Yeah. And then times a hundred. Times, times that by three hundred sixty-five. Yeah. Right, and then multiply that by one hundred. He is. That's you, we use the we use the term to say, look, somebody smashed it, right? He's our our uncle park. has smashed it out the park, let me tell you may now. Allah, may, Allah, may Allah grant him to see this in his hasana. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, you know what's the funny I mean. thing as well? Is that people still, after this video, I'm, I'm being told that people are recognizing him because of this viral video, going up to him, giving him zamzam, giving him gifts, Allah. dates. Allah. Masha Allah, beautiful. he's literally an Absolutely ambassador uh, of beautiful. the haram. <laughs> Allah but just goes to show, look how, look how strong you know he is even that? now. I've seen a lot of local people there, they do a lot of khair in the haram. Uh, they take like, boxes of tissues and they go to the Mataf area mm -hmm. uh, where they do their Ta'af and they, they just stand there and people take tissues because it gets it's amazing. Of course. People get sweaty. They, they uh, use that to, you know, you, uh, for their sweat. Oh, they're giving that water or they're giving that carrier That's bags. Beautiful. Or Absolutely. they're doing certain things. It's the local people that are there still having that kind of khidmah for uh, the service for the people that are visiting the holy places. We were talking about heroes people. earlier. The real heroes right there. Yeah. Absolutely. I've always said, I've always said, I love Mecca. I, I love the you, boat. How long did you live there? I love Mecca Sam? more than Medina. I've said the electricity there, the types of worship <laughs> you can access there. Amazing. Like, I've, I'm just a Mecca guy, Inshallah. I'll be honest. You can That's tell he's really passionate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. More passionate than you, alhamdulillah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. anyway you know what? <laughs> uh, I think we've got a few minute, more minutes left. Yeah. I've got a final story to wrap it up. Yeah. And uh, this story came out a, a week or two ago let's let's take a read of it woman wasn't allowed in the nightclub or was it a restaurant because of a hijab all right so let me take i remember you, reading let this me, let me take you through the timeline yeah. of this right um it was reported by one of the tabloids in the uk as a woman that was queuing up to go to apparently a nightclub but was refused by a bouncer because of a hijab, hijab. right and everyone started you know slaying her she's getting Clapped from the Muslim camp. She was a clap from that camp. Like she was like, <laughs> like everyone said, "Why are you going?" Obviously, the Muslims said, "Why are you going to the nightclub?" Social media Other finished said, her oh, off. You know what? It, it was the Then she broke her silence. Yeah. And she came out and the tweet and said, "Guys, you know what? Uh, I've seen all the comments. To be honest, I need to clarify. I wasn't actually going to the nightclub. I was going to the restaurant that Allah. happened to be in the same building as the nightclub. Yeah. And that's what happened. But obviously, people got onto the bandwagon and start jumping there and stuff like that." Yeah. And this happened also with one of our brothers that we know quite dearly. He done that as well. He jumped on. He started slating her and stuff mm. like that. But you know what? I've got to give credit to him. He then came out after reading her tweet and saying that, you know what? I'm a big man. I can accept that I jumped on the bandwagon and he apologized to her Mashallah. publicly. Absolutely. You know what? I'm sorry. I should have that verified takes a lot the of courage. news. Just takes a big, Muslim lot of courage. Chinese whispers, as I call it. Well, it was not only yeah? Muslims. It came out on the main tablet. Yeah, true. Right? And the sister, you know what? May Allah protect her I mean, and then hijab protected I her. Mean. And look, she was going somewhere else, assumed she was doing something I mean. different, and then that's what happened. But you know what the moral of the story is? You're never too big to ask for forgiveness. Never, never. You know I mean? And at the same time, you know, we're sometimes so quick 
to jump the gun. Yeah. Like yeah, the other absolutely. day, we saw Sammy walking into the stables. We thought, you know what? He wants to be a horse. But Sammy doesn't want to be a horse. He wants to ride horses, right? <laughs> He's got the hype to be a jockey. He has, actually. Do I? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, have, you have, you have, you have. Jockeys are compact people. I haven't got a good comeback people. yet, but I will get back to you. Jockeys are compact, <laughs> I understand. But you know what? Yeah. We're almost at the end of this segment. Now, we're going to be coming back after a short break. Please do stay tuned with more interesting news from around the world. And remember, the most important part is that we're talking about Muslims for the whole show. So stay tuned to In Other News. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. Welcome back to In Other News. Now, you've had a very, very entertaining show so far. I think, that for me, the most entertaining article was the news all the way from Makkad, our elderly grandfather, telling us what's good, what we need to do to have a very good akhirah, inshallah, my brothers and sisters. I hope you enjoyed it and took some nasiha from that. But now, let's go to our next segment. Love it or hate it. <laughs> Now, this is the segment where you guys can get involved with the show and you can have your say in the show. If there's something you want to send in, you can send it in via WhatsApp or you want to email it or you want to send a text. This is the way to do it, my brothers and sisters. And the details on the screen somewhere around here. I don't know. Anyway, boys, I believe there's some things that you want to share with the guys at home that people have sent in to us, right? 100%, 100%. Love it or... Hate it. Absolutely. I mean, we've got loads of uh, texts coming through this week of love it or hate it. I've just picked one out of, uh, of many, to be honest, which I found really interesting. And we've got a text uh, that's come through saying, I live in a small flat and I have no space to dry my clothes. So I'm forced to use a clothes horse. <laughs> it's a cramped space. Plus the UK weather is rubbish. A so a clothes horse. So pretty much this person is saying that it's tight in their house. They have no space to put their clothes on a washing line, plus the weather is rubbish, I feel their and pain. they use it. I feel their pain. Honest, I live in a flat, yeah. right? And yeah. it's difficult, especially when you've got weather like what we have now. It's raining, and you've got clothes, you've just washed it, yeah, they don't dry definitely. properly. Then they get that smell. And they get that smell, yeah. right? And you don't want to, and they have to dry when the house is really, really warm. But, but if you. Yeah, go on, go on. But if you heat up the house, you get hot. It's like a continuous battle. So I've, I've got a little plan that I do, right? What I do is I get the wash closed yeah. and I take it down to the laundry, stick it in the dryer, cut, because I can't even put a dryer in my flat. It's a bit... Uh, Noisy. It, it's a, it, we've already got a washing machine in there and I want to swap it out. Anyway, long story. Right. Take it down there, chuck it in, put it in the dryer, go to the masjid, pray, come back, Bob's your uncle. Yeah, if it was me, I was living with you, I'd kick you out of the house and just put a tumble dryer in there. <laughs> Sorted, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, to be honest, the point I'm trying to make is that have you ever tried to close a clothes horse and it traps your fingers? Okay, it first is of all, the I, biggest I, I pain in what's the world. I don't, I've never heard of a clothes horse. What, what's the actual name for it? I believe it's a clothes prop. A clothes, that's very posh and middle class and, you know. That's what the you term. a clothes rack. It's the same. Clothes, uh, clothes, clothes horse because right. you open it and it looks like a horse. It actually does. Well, you you, you, wait, are we talking about the thing that you, it, you, it collapses yeah. Yeah, and it, then you yeah. opens up and it's got lots of different layers in it? Yeah, Sam, you, that's a clothes prop. I thought it was a clothes prop. I mean, well, you can Google it. Oh, clothes can, horse, I thought it was a person that wears a lot of clothes. Yeah. Well, to be honest, we'll let the viewers I know, um, I know we've, said, we've heard some Guys, stories. Guys, you go online, what is it? Is it a clothes horse? Is it a clothes prop? Uh, is it a clothes rack? <laughs> Can I just say, right, I know we've been talking about horse riding on this episode. So I'm, I think you get yeah, a little no, bit confused here. Yeah, I feel a little bit horsey, yeah, yeah, feeling feeling a little horsey yeah, right? You're looking a bit horsey as well today as well, aren't you? It's all, right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. We know, you're a small it's a bit confused. with a big ego. That's, what it, that's exactly what it is. Fine. Now, so, so what are we, are we going to, is it love it or hate it? To be honest, clothes horses hate it, definitely. Yeah, I hate it. Definitely. Yeah, I hate it. Yeah, I agree. To be honest, I've never had to use one. Ah, all right. Tumble dry the way. You don't know the council pain, do you? You do not know the struggle, man. <laughs> <laughs> you really don't. He doesn't. Anyway. Now, guys, I've got something that I'd like to share. There's a video I want you guys to watch, and then you can tell me yourselves if you love it or hate it. Let's go to the video. Yeah. I'm gonna park my car. So um, let's not let's not just keep to the lines, and then let's not just keep to the lines. Let's just leave a little gap for me to park here and let's not keep the lines. If you had just moved your car a little bit and you moved your car a little bit, I could have got my car in there still, yeah. Please. One word for that. Inconsiderate. 
Un yes. Uncourteous behavior. Definitely, because okay. you're just thinking about yourself. Like as you said, if the car, the first, the initial car had moved a little bit back, reversed a little bit yeah, back, yeah, stayed nice in point. the line, the plenty is... of room there. And the other car had had moved back as well. You there would have been sufficient car. space for another car. Clearly, guys, you go to the Middle East. I lived in the Middle East. Yeah, the way they park, atrocious. Honestly, it definitely it helps. It's easier. But it's just all over the place. It's so chaotic, it's perfect. But here <laughs> so in the UK, chaotic, it's perfect. It is. It yeah, is. but they, they don't... Look, we have parking wardens around the clock. Yeah, they don't have wardens over there. I don't think they have that in the Middle East. Yeah. I mean, I think they introduced it in now because I've recently just seen some. But in the UK, some councils only rely on parking tickets. That's right. right? Especially when you got... And if they catch you slipping. we got drivers like that yeah. parking with, uh, I don't know, half a car foot on the front. I don't understand why they would the do back, that. And then they're parking there. And then the other worst thing is when they're parking two foot away from the curb mm. with a, maybe a slight... And in the middle of the road, you know where they're going. Oh, I, I think I've got the, the perfect solution What's for this. Solution? This is pretty much my solution. If I was the Prime Minister of the UK, the first thing I would do to help a problem like this is that I would introduce a law that people, the citizens, could push the car a little bit forward if there was a mechanism to push the car a little bit forward, not breaking in, but just to push it a little bit forward to give other people a space. If you was the Prime Minister of this country... So what you're yeah. trying to say is you if you became... Been, you would have been Brexit's nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> I agree with that. Maybe, yeah. but there yeah. would be a I, lot of people that would love I just you. want to say that, so you're trying to say if you yeah. became the Prime Minister, you would yeah. completely change the mechanical makeup of a car just so people you know can push the car forward. No, no, a, like, what if your car gets pushed down the road? Which is because I mean, Larry I mean, wants to take the car. I tried to push it off me, sir. Oh, he's gone down the hill. Too I'm, far look, now. Look, that's just too extreme. I'm not saying I'll totally, you know, uh, have the solution, but I would make things better, definitely. With something like this, I'm not going to lie. Surely, isn't Love this it or down hate to? It? What, what do you guys? I, I, I definitely I hate, hate that. Hate. But isn't it surely down to somebody's own personal awareness that look, you know what? There's going to be other people using the road as well. Let me park. Maybe they're just bad drivers. You have to take into consideration bay parking is not easy. Mm. It's not easy, guys. Let's be honest. Are you a good bay parker? Yeah. Oh, okay. That might just be you. Are you a good bay parker, Faz? I am. Yeah? The best. Yeah. Right, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm caring maybe and considerate for everybody else. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say... I hate it. What would we love, though, about it? I hate what it. I mean? hate it. I, thank you. Some people might love it, so I like to keep a foot... I've got a feeling he's the, kind of, he's the kind of yeah. guy that would do something like that. I'm going to say love it. Yeah, I'm going to say love it. Why? Because sometimes you're tired. You don't really have the, you know, judgment you to see. You know he's done that. But this is proving that he's yeah, done this before, right? right? Yeah. That's why he was trying to defend yeah. it. Yeah, that's why he's oh, backing yeah. it. Yeah, if I was prime... <laughs> oh, love yeah. it, guys. I yeah. ruled the world, this guy, man. Yeah. Anyway, anyway yeah, love it. <laughs> Definitely. All right. I've got one. You've got one? Yeah, I've got one. Someone's, uh, I'll pick one out as well. Uh, hi guys, I live in London and there's nothing worse than standing at a bus queue, being the first one there, and when, a, when your bus turns up, everyone rushes you. Do you think we should have queuing systems for buses, love it or hate it? Again, Ooh, I think that's similar to this one where it's, it's just being considerate, isn't it? No, I get this guy, I get the uh, person's point here. Yeah. They're, they're the first person on the bus stop. And it happened to me the other day, to be honest. First person in the bus stop, waiting for a number 25. I was there, nice and early, right? I, I thought you drive. Mm. Well, that day I took my bus because I had to give my car to the garage, but that's enough bothering in my personal life. But anyway, <laughs> I was waiting at the bus stop. The <laughs> bus, dri bus pulled up. Before he did, I was the first one there. Okay. Bus pulled, and all of us, I don't know where these people came from, but all of a sudden there was thousands, of, well, I was going to say thousands. There was a lot of people more yeah, than yeah. what I was there. And I was like... Swimming yeah, amongst people, out the way, pushed me out of the way, getting on. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I would have done the same. I'm not gonna lie. I would have pushed <laughs> you out of the way. Like personally for myself, um, I like the excitement. Think about it, if you have a sad life, you finished work. There's nothing going on for you at the moment in time. You want to get on the bus, and then all of a sudden, everyone starts running forward. It's a great, exciting panic. Who can get on the bus first? No, but the person's asking here, queuing for buses. Yes, love it or hate it. To be honest, I have seen queues. I have seen queues on buses when I was a bus inspector. Yeah, yeah. I mentioned that yeah, before. Yeah. I have seen that when I was out up in the sticks. When I mean up in the sticks, not n n too much central London, but when you go out a little bit further out. Oh, I used to live in a tree, but anyway. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> It's all right, he's living in the yeah. Middle East, he doesn't know these lingos, does he? No, okay, like, sorry, it's out in the sticks and there's people do actually queue up for buses yeah, yeah. and they're one by one getting on. But when you've got bus stops I in know, Stratford right? and you've got like 15 buses serving one route, where are you going to put the line? Like up north, 
<coughs> when there's a queue for the bus, nobody's pushing to get on the bus. Everybody waits nice and calm and they get on one at a time. So yeah. is it maybe it's just a London thing? I think London's too busy. Yeah. Is it is it a question I mean, of it being too busy or people are losing their etiquettes? That's hey. a good point. No, 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 no I think it's too busy. I don't think it's got to do with etiquette. You don't? People, yeah. I think people do, even though he's right, people do like... I think I've, I've find, seen it myself. Why is it fun to squirm around people, which is okay. It's not, yeah, Everyone's it's got exciting, their own, isn't yeah. it? Everyone's got their own things. But, you know what? When people do, like, what's it, fishing Push, around yeah, to yeah. get and pushing and trying to get on the bus, they are a bit courteous because obviously they're there, they want to get on, but sometimes they, they're not really like, Oh, it's not aggressive. It's, it's not, not aggressive. Mean, yeah. Yeah. To be honest, I me, I, I, I draw the line with all people. Um, if it's all person, I obviously let them go first, even if they are behind me, because obviously you have to be a bit courteous. But for me, I'm going to say, guys, love it. I love the excitement, trying to get your oyster cod out as quick as possible, and everyone's running. Amazing. Picks me up. I'm going to say, no, I hate it. Cues, love yeah. it. Well, hate if it. there were no cues for buses, I'll hate it. Hate, hate it. it. Hate it. Yeah, hate it. Yeah. Hate it. How, yeah, and you know what? Becoming, yeah. I, I'm glad we all agree on something. Yeah. And that's that's probably well, guys, the, yeah. the one and only time we're all going to agree on one thing. You know what? This is the end of hate it. Oh, no, no, no. It, this is the end of love it or hate it. We're now going to go to in other news. <laughs> You know what? Fazali never makes mistakes, but I've made one today. I introduced this segment wrong. It's actually in all other news. So let's get straight into this segment. Boys, are you ready? I'm ready. Absolutely Now I've ready. got a video I want to share with you guys real quickly, right? You watch football, sir? Love it. Joe, do you watch football? Here and there. Here and there, right? When you get a chance, when you've got the time. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Just tell me what you think about this goalkeeper real quick. Oh, let's have a look. You saw that, right? Oh crazy, right? So, how, how does the goal? How, how does he not know? It's the know first ten seconds. Yeah, how is he, has gone into the goal. How is he not watching the ball? I mean, surely right at the start of the game is when you're the most oh. alert, Sam. Right? To be honest, I would have docked his wages because of that. <laughs> like, how do you in the first ten? You can seconds, tell he's worked in the Middle East. <laughs> how would you have done that in the first ten seconds? Look like an absolute clown, a, a true lemon. I, you know what? You know what? They might not know how to stop a goal. But I guarantee you, they know how to make... Like hotels, right? Not hotels. They know how to make football stadiums. Oh, yeah, they're let's the best. Look at, let's look at, look at this video. This is, of course, the flag. The flag for the games. There's a room for the game. There's a room for the game. At the time of the game, it's a room. It's a room. Sofa. MashaAllah. Look, MashaAllah, guys. Look at the flag. Look at the flag. Look at the flag. شوفوا التجهيزات بس صبروا على الجماعة صبروا شوية خلي طلعون لكم شيء كوالتي على مستوى شوف شوف المباراة وانت قاعد هنا شوفوا شوف المباراة هنا هذا شوفوا هاي كل الأجنحة اللي قلت لكم عليها اللي بتصير فندق كلها أجنحة دار مدار الأستاد كلها أجنحة تقدر تشوف المباراة داخل بهالطريقة شوف هذا الجناح ما شاء الله تبارك الله ما شاء الله تبارك الله That's fantastic. You know something, Smashed right? It. So if you got a game like that, and you know that's in preparation for the World Cup, right? I think so. Yeah. So yeah, that stadium have, and yeah. have you ever seen a stadium with bedroom slash hotel room <laughs> all the way around it well to be honest the arabs do it the best stuff like that they literally right. are an example of how to utilize money yeah they spend it they go yeah, but it looks crazy amazing. but this is one of the things that they come out with the goods like can Mashallah. you imagine being at the emirates laying down in your bed watching arsenal lose can you ima- can you imagine that <laughs> It's like, watch them? it's like it's like it's like going to Old Trafford and imagining that the Old Trafford players will be able to kick a ball, you know, to another player. You know, what I, mean? yeah. I understand that. No, you wouldn't get. In fact, at Old Trafford, you wouldn't get out of the bed to watch it. Actually, you just stay in bed, read a book. <laughs> I tell you what. I tell you what. They, they don't. Uh, they, if they're gonna be good at something, they're gonna be good at something. If they're gonna be good at not saving the ball, they're gonna do that. Yeah. If yeah, they're yeah. gonna be good at making stadiums, they're, they're gonna, gonna be the best. That. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely. If they're gonna be the best at howlers, uh, they keep. I tell you what. I tell you what. 
I got another one as well, yeah? Okay. We all know inventions, yeah? We all know about all of this stuff, yeah? yeah about how to do this and this invention. But I'll tell you what, yeah? When do you think the toothbrush was invented? Just I basic would say uh, 1911. I don't know. Close. Not that close, but... 1892. It was invented in 1980. The actual toothbrush as we know it. No wow. way. Yeah, the actual toothbrush as we know it. But, but Muslims have been using toothbrushes, and we know it as miswap, way yeah. before that the good old tooth stick i told you the when i used to take stick. that to school <coughs> yeah. people were like why are you brushing your teeth with wood i was like no it's actually you know it's a toothpick and then they was trying to explain to them and then people were just you know being very judgmental because it's true it's something that they've never seen to. it before yeah, so yeah, if, if, if before. you guys at home have a, don't know what a miswak is it's actually a brush yeah it's a stick yeah, yeah. The end of it, it feathers out to be a brush, yep. and you use it to actually brush your and teeth. And you know what? It's better, it's, than, it's better than an actual toothbrush. Yeah, it's natural. Do you know why? Because the chemicals they, and stuff inside absolutely. it, right? Absolutely. The juice inside of this work is the exact juice that they use for toothpaste as well. Allah to give it the shine, the clean, and, and, and you know what? protect the enamel. It's free. It's free. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's good that you start talking about toothpaste. I hope you use some someday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, talking about toothpaste, guys, you know, let's, uh, you know, got a piece of news here. Yeah. Guess what? What was the festival before Halloween that just occurred a few days ago? You know, guys, what? know? Diwali. Right. Diwali. Diwali, a festival that uh, occurred. The they had fireworks. It was basically people had bonfires in their ha- homes. And guess what again? The Muslims were to blame yeah, again. So In fact, the... let's look at the headline. Diwali fireworks, Muslim takeover. <laughs> what do you mean, man? Takeover. I don't understand this. Like, it's a... people thought that Muslims were taking over the country. What, they thought Muslims were coming to get you? festival with fireworks and with all these celebrations. Oh, so they so, thought Diwali was a Muslim oh, festival. the Muslims were coming, oh. bro. <laughs> they did, yeah, absolutely. Are you sure this is real news? Yeah, such, bro. Check the news out. It could be a spoof story, but as far as I know, it is a real story. In fact, to be honest, up and down the country, you've been hearing fireworks. Yeah, we have. Have you not been hearing them yourself? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you do fire- fireworks uh, yourself? I think we're going to... Uh, we've just had uh, uh, Guy Fawkes as well, like 5th of November yeah, as well. Yeah. We're going to have that. Absolutely. And there's going to be a lot of fireworks. I'm, I'm guessing we, we're probably going to get blamed for that as well. Yeah, maybe. to be honest, and it's, it's quite funny because they were blamed for Halloween. They were blamed for Diwali. I think it's just people. Yeah, it's lack all right. Of we've got a strong awareness. jaw. It's all right. It's it's all right. right. Never mind the Muslims, Joe as we say. Absolutely. <laughs> I love a good old fireworks. The thing though. is, I think, it's, I think this comes down to uh, people not not understanding what's actually taking place and quick to pass judgment. That's yeah, all it absolutely, is. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. And I think articles like that shed light on how silly people can be sometimes. Yeah, no, Re- no, really. no. But if it is uh, made up, if it is made up, it, I don't know why people will go that far to make it up. But I tell you what, I tell you what, we as Muslims, we yeah. do have a duty, yeah? Uh, all fun and jokes aside, we do have uh, uh, a duty to uphold certain ways that we conduct ourselves and if we do get blamed for certain things no problem alhamdulillah it's not us we move on and we outshine with our character and yeah. you know what muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam won many hearts based on his character so you know what be the best we can man yeah i wonder Wise why we don't have there. fireworks on eid why why do we not have we, you we, never we, questioned we, 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 we i have part. never seen fireworks on eid yeah, Maybe that's to just... be honest, you know, the last Eid in the past we've done, because it's ended, because of the summer period, it wasn't getting dark enough and the kids wanted mm. to go home. We don't really do it. That, yeah. uh, the stuff that I've been involved in, we didn't really do it. Yeah. But you know what? It's not a bad idea, that. Yeah, you know what, Joyno? You are a cracker. Way! <laughs> <laughs> As a firework. Okay. Anyway, yeah, but yeah, could you use, uh, that was published the 23rd I think, I think of October, down, that story. Yeah. Families want to use fireworks for Eid, right? Think about it, in the summertime, as you just mentioned, the days are long. You're going to be staying up till 11 o'clock at night just to let some fireworks off. People are like, you know what, forget about it. We don't need it. So happens that in the wintertime, mm. fireworks are readily available everywhere. And the days are shorter, the nights are longer. By 6 p.m., everybody's letting off fireworks everywhere. And you've, for the past few weeks, yeah. we've been hearing them. Yeah, quite dangerous, though, to be fair. Like, it obviously, be very when dangerous, the kids, yeah. they're fi- firing them at, uh, you know... Cats and dogs on the street, so, yeah, we, other we, siblings. It is quite dangerous. We have to, we have to remind everyone at home: be careful with fireworks. Always. But you know what, Faz? It's been a really good show, man. We've had some 
really good uh, uh, inspiring stories yes. on the show uh, especially the the sister with the hijab going Absolutely, on to become yeah. a horse rider, a horse a jockey, rider. Yeah. that's actually quite fun and yes just want to remind everyone at home this is our first episode if you want to get involved with segments like we've just had love it or leave, love it or hate it uh, get involved, send us in your comments, send us in your videos, maybe we might feature in next week's show yeah, or, the, or the shows to come 100%. up. And what I want you guys to do is go home, search online and we'll find that it really is called the horse. Close <laughs> horse. <laughs> Close you horse. Confuse yeah. yourself. You know what, and nice Sammy, you know what, you've come up with a few jokes, isn't it? I'm, I'm full of jokes, yeah. Give us a joke, man, this week. We'll have Close a joke horse. a week. All right, all right, one all right. joke a week. Can one I use this? Okay, since we were talking the about Halloween, we were talking about ghosts. What do you call a ghost, uh, an Asian ghost? An Asian, uh, Asian ghost? Yeah, what would you call an Asian ghost? I don't know. You call it Kasper, the friendly ghost. <laughs> <laughs> you like that one there. You know why, brothers and sisters? Because that is a multilingual joke, a multifaceted joke. For those who know, <laughs> that will go. truly know. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. I have to say that. That's a good one. But please be honest. Did you make that joke up I actually did, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll give one a week. Yeah. One a week? Oh, one a week. Definitely week. One a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very generous yeah, of you so indeed. That joke. That, you're going to have to have a... You're gonna, this, it's going to be hard for you to top that joke no, now, don't next worry. week. I always top myself. Not in yeah. that <laughs> Any other inspirational... <laughs> you know what, right? I have to say this, right? My favourite story from this episode was definitely the elder, the grandfather in the harem. Favourite story of the week, yeah? That was my favourite story of the week. To be honest, I can't agree with you enough, Faz. That was a beautiful piece of advice from Mecca al mukarrama mm. Absolutely golden um, advice he gave there. But to yeah. be honest, I like people acting a clown and just bloopers, to be fair. So I think for me, my personal favourite tonight was the lemon in net that let the goal in the first 10 seconds. What do you think? I don't think he let it in. He, he did, he did. <laughs> he did How did, you he be did. a professional goalkeeper in the first 10 seconds? <laughs> but you know what? And let it in. You know what? Oh. Talking about football, did, did you guys see the tackle on Andre Gomez oh. at Goodison Park? I'll be honest, I haven't actually watched the footage yet, but I've heard a lot about it. I was oh. watching the game live so, yeah, go on, from man. home, not at Goodison Park. But I don't think it was a red card. I know yeah. that sounds, uh, that sounds so bad. What, because, as he, as he so basically, Son, his, Son did a slight tackle. I agree with that. It's a yellow. It was a little bit dangerous. But the way he fell... Andre Gomez fell against Serge Aurier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It broke his leg, yeah. and his leg was bent. His foot oh and ankle God. were bent the other way. Oof. Can you remember the? Uh, the um, Ooh, I know, we, I know you guys. If I give horrible. you a mile, you're gonna take. If you give you an inch, you're gonna take a mile with this football thing. Forget about the football. No, honestly, right? Do you think it was a red card or not? To be honest, no. Because initially, the referee it, gave him a yellow, and it went to VAR. Because it, it went to VAR, and then the, the referee. The behind the scenes gave a red because of the, obviously because it was a leg break. But for me personally, watching it and I rewinded it, I played it, rewinded it, yeah. played it. I, you, got, I, you got to love Son though. To be honest, I've watched uh, a few Tottenham games though, and the fans absolutely love him. Club legend. They just he's just a generally nice guy. He is, and he's you know what? Really Funny you should mention that, right? Because as soon as it happened, he was crying his eyes out. But there was the Muslim striker who plays for Everton. Yeah. Check Tosson, right? He initially went to console Andre Gomez on the ground, who was yeah, also yeah, yeah. screaming and crying. But then he saw that Son was crying and he was consoling him as well. Yeah. And even at the end of the game, he tweeted and he said, you know what? I, and he, don't forget, he scored right at the end to get them one point. But as well, I wish I never scored. Uh, I wish, uh, he said something, I wish, I wish yeah. none, of us, none of us had actually played this game because of what happened. Well, is this but, like getting too serious in the football thing? Casper <laughs> goshed. <laughs> that was an excellent joke. Gosh, the Gosh, Gosh. Say it right. All I want to remind you is don't wear the ghost outfit and go to a Yeah, don't game. be trick-or-treating. Yeah, no, I won't. Don't worry about it. Because you know what? Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. want to Islamify Yeah, I don't think you should well. be giving anyone fashion advice. Okay, really. <laughs> I mean, you know, with your little cute sticker on yourself. Yeah? That's to hide you know a logo. I mean, yeah. Mate, you're up here sitting like looking like Phil Mitchell. Look, he's saying... <laughs> Smile, anyway, smiling, is smiling is sunnah. Smiling is sunnah. And you know what, right? Mitchell, yeah? Yeah. Phil Mitchell. Yeah. All right. All right. Close horse, yeah? Right. Close anyway, horse. We will, we will uh, have a look at that uh, next week. Obviously, you guys can let me know. What do you think if it is uh, it's not a close, close horse, horse or not? But yeah, but a brilliant show. We've had a lot of, uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. We're going to be on every week. Please stay tuned. Send us in your videos, love it or hate it. Let us know how much you enjoy the show, this show, how much you're going to be looking forward to the next show. Tell me. 
Love yeah, it yeah. Hate it. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, we've got other uh, guests that's going to come on as well. We've got Khidr that's going to come on. We've got a few more others that we're going to bring on as well. We've got his scary smile. I don't know what's that guy in the back. <laughs> but yes, guys, we really want you to get involved. Send us your stuff in. Send us your stories if you've got some inspiring stories, something that made you laugh during the week. Send it us at inothernews at imanchannel.tv. That's inothernews at imanchannel.tv. And to be Brilliant. honest, guys, remember as well, sending your love it or hate it. You can be woman, man, young, <laughs> old who it's for everyone basically to send you in can be a your... woman a man yes, young old yeah. it's for everybody absolutely short small big yeah anything so else you want to add to that everyone green <laughs> blue whoever you may be but brother and sister please do call in send us in your videos early so we can look call at in, them yeah? Yeah, they can call in as well. I don't well, think they can. No, they can't call can in. They're not no, calling. Oh. No, they can't call in. But you can email. Maybe in the future. Yeah. You can Maybe email. in the future. Yeah, we Maybe should do that. Future. We should introduce that as well. Yeah. 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 You want to start taking calls? Is that what you're saying, Sammy? Absolutely. You want to make this a call center? My jokes. Yes. <laughs> you know what? Please do stay tuned for the next episode. I've thoroughly enjoyed the show. I've definitely enjoyed Sam's jokes. Big J's enjoyed the jokes as well, and we've had some love it or hate it as well. But we're going to be back with you again next week on In Other News. <laughs>